Hey everybody, my name is Ted Forbes. Welcome back to another edition of the Art of Photography vlog. Um, we did the meetup this weekend in Dallas. Huge success, it was tons of fun. We had uh, about 10 people show up and had a wonderful time. Met up at the farmer's market, uh, shot all kinds of wonderful pictures and went and got a awesome hamburger and a beer afterwards and it was it, a good time was had by all. Um, so anyway, uh, I wanna thank the guys for coming out. Uh, we had talked about getting together again since we're all in Dallas and it's close. Um, one of the things we talked about about is uh, you know Dallas is very hot right now being in Texas and it might be kind of fun to do some night photography and we talked about doing another meetup you know workshop photography kind of thing uh, where everybody would come out and I'm gonna throw this out there too it might be kind of fun to film the vlog doing that and that way you could get some input from some other people than just me and uh, it might be really cool to see what people do as far as night photography goes it's a subject that I, I've wanted to cover uh, for a long time on the art of photography and I haven't done it yet uh, I actually have filmed it before uh, but due to technical difficulties and stuff, I've, I've never got one that I could use. So maybe this is it. Maybe this is the one we could we could do and keep it casual, if nonetheless, and, and keep it in the vlog. So anyway, uh, leave me a note, leave me a comment, send me an email if that's something you are interested in. Um, anyway, I've got to run in a minute because I've got a dinner appointment tonight, but I did want to... Get the, vlog, get the vlog in before I left. And there is a topic I want to talk about today. I've been on this enormous movie kick lately, and I saw this film, and there's no way I, I cannot mention it on this podcast. I want to talk about a film called Soy Cuba, uh, which is a film made by a Russian filmmaker in 1964, a Russian filmmaker by the name of Mikhail Kalatazov. Is that how you say it? Kalatazov. Um, it's amazing. Uh, I've seen some, well, I've seen parts of a lot of his films before, and I've, I have to admit, this is the first time last night that I've ever watched Soy Cuba, and it is incredible. Um, you need to do yourself a favor. I will put some links to some things on YouTube because there's some scenes up. Um, I have never seen a film shot in the mid 60s that looks like this. It is simply stunning. A uh, quick background on the film. It was made by a Russian filmmaker fum filmed in Cuba. It's a politically charged film and I'm sure that probably had some reason why it disappeared for a long time. It was not well received in Russia or Cuba once it was finished um, and it was probably um, I, I don't know because of the political nature of it it, it probably just didn't survive. Um, but the filming techniques used in this and if you're a photographer um, this, you just do yourself a favor and look at this. It's amazing. Um, one of the things that's interesting that they, they made use of, and I didn't realize this before, a lot of the outdoor scenes were shot in infrared. And it's very... Uh, rare that you find a movie that has infrared in it that's not done for some weird horror effect or something and even then not very much of it uh, but you know if you're not familiar with the infrared uh, infrared film shoots up in the infrared spectrum of the light and it causes things like blues to go really dark and things like reds to go really white so or greens even and so you see uh, like a lot of the trees a lot of the things that are green the sugar cane in these outdoor scenes uh, they almost go to this this almost surreal white color because it's viewing heat um, and then things like the ocean and the sky I go black even though it's it's obviously daylight it has such a dramatic effect uh, it's one thing that's amazing about this the second thing that's really revolutionary about this that has influenced a lot of people over the years uh, Martin Scorsese found this film or kind of discovered it rediscovered it uh, in the 90s and was he and Francis Ford Coppola were largely responsible for putting it back together and getting a DVD release on this and I certainly think it's you know influenced scenes particularly in Scorsese's films um, but you also see them in other things too. But anyway, the whole idea is that they have these long sequences that are all one shot. And this is before Steadicams. I think the first major use of Steadicam, and Steadicam basically is mounting a video camera with kind of a vest attachment that has a counterweight. Talked about a little bit about the show before. You can get them in smaller varieties for, for smaller cameras. But it allows the person to run or walk and not shake the camera. It stays steady. So it's a Steadicam. Uh, they had a very crude adaptation of an early Steadicam that they made, and it took several cameras cameraman to actually walk with this thing and actually unhook it and put it on pulleys and stuff because it, 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 it goes in all kinds of weird directions. It is simply stunning. Um, th this is a film that uh, the story is interesting. Um, the actors are really good in it, but it's the way this is told and the way that it's shown. And compositionally, everything's really done with this extreme wide angle. Uh, it probably done for practical reasons to eliminate some of the shake, uh, but it has a really interesting way, and wide angle does this even with still photography, of really pulling the eye in when it's, when it's framed upright. Um, anyway, just go check it out. I'm gonna put some links below. I don't wanna do too much talking about it because I want it to speak for itself. Um, 
uh, Michaela's done several other movies too that are just simply stunning and beautiful and uh, it, it's all black and white and, and like I said it, it, you know maybe the movie connection doesn't make as much sense for some people but but just as a photographer you know it's so cool to be influenced by that. I mean, it's different enough being a different medium because they have sound and they have time that come into play, uh, whereas still photography is just a moment in time that's silent. But I think just what you can glean from that whole concept of storytelling from a really good director who's put together a beautiful film is, is, is amazing. Anyway, that's really what I wanted to share with you today, and it's about all I got. Um, sold everything, got to run. Um, those are two inside jokes from the Dallas Meetup this weekend, so sorry if you didn't get them. But uh, anyway, uh, this has been fun, and uh, go check out Soy Cuba, or I Am Cuba. And uh, we will see you tomorrow. So once again, it's been the Art of Photography Vlog Edition, and thank you for watching. <laughs>